Hello church family, this is Pastor Jim coming to you from my front porch here in Raleigh and just outside Cary and just wanted to share a few thoughts with you this morning. Beautiful sunny morning, it's going to get hot today but um, it's nice to enjoy the sun in the morning time. <clears throat> Today's reading is from uh, Exodus chapter 16 and the entire chapter is about how God provided daily bread for the people of Israel when they were in the wilderness. And he did this for a couple of reasons. He did this in response really to their complaint. The Israelites said, grumbled, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, Exodus 16, chapter three, 16, verse three. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, when we sat by pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted, instead you brought us into this wilderness to make this whole assembly die of hunger. So the people are essentially blaming Moses for bringing them into the wilderness, but they're complaining against God and saying, oh, this is what we had in Egypt. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew chapter 6 and also in the book of Luke, give us today our daily bread. That is true physically and spiritually. Lord, give us today our daily bread. And the same principle was taught in Exodus chapter 16. And Charles Spurgeon, in one of his devotionals, wrote on this concept of daily bread. He said, essentially, we need God's grace and his fresh anointing. We need to go back to him for daily grace and provision. He says, we cannot live on old bread, the bread of Egypt, and we cannot have the presence of future grace before we need it. That God gives us grace in our time of need. And so... He writes this specifically about our daily bread. He says, Isn't it best for us that this should be the case, so that we may often run to his throne, to Jesus' throne, and be constantly reminded of his love? God wants us to trust him in daily dependence. And so Charles Spurgeon says, essentially, with our daily bread, isn't it best that God made that the case, that we need to go to him continually, and be constantly reminded of his love. So Exodus chapter 16, the people are in the wilderness and they ask God for food and God says, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to rain bread from heaven down among you. And in the evening, he gives them quail. And then he says in the morning, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna find these light wafers on the ground. As the dew dries up, there's gonna be these wafers and the Bible says they look like coriander seed and they were fine wafers. And the people said, what is it? We don't know what it is. And the Hebrew word manna actually means, what is it? Because the, the people didn't know what to call it. But God said, go out and gather enough for each person for each day. And he gave them an allotment according to how many people in each household. And he said, he said this is what you have for each day. And then God said, going back to his principle in creation of six days, and a seventh day of rest. He said, on the sixth day, go out and gather enough for two days and bake it or boil it and or cook it and save it for the seventh day. And he said, on each of the first six days, eat what you have for that day, but on the sixth day, save some for the seventh day because there won't be any on the seventh day. And so what happens is some of the people, they go out and they gather the bread and, and they save some on, let's say, day three, but on day four, that bread that they saved on day three got moldy and, and had bugs in it and was spoiled. And so they learned that they had to eat what God had provided for them for that day and look forward, trust him for the next day. And then also, some of the people on the, on the sixth day, they didn't gather twice as much as the Lord had told them to gather. And so they went out looking for it on the seventh day, and they didn't find any. And so God did this uh, in response to their complaints, gave them this bread, and he also did this. The Bible says, I will test them to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. And so the people went out on the sixth day, and they gathered enough for two days, according to God's instruction, and they saved it for the Sabbath. But some people went out and didn't find any on the seventh day because they hadn't gathered twice as much as God had told them on the sixth day. And I was thinking about this, a couple of spiritual lessons here, I think, 
uh, first it reemphasizes God's order and creation of six days of rest, six days of work and one day of rest telling the people you are to gather enough for each day for the six days and then on the sixth day gather enough so that you can rest on the seventh day as God commanded. Secondly, in our lives, sometimes we get thinking and praying way too far ahead of time or we get thinking and presuming about the future. And what happens is sometimes that can make us ungrateful for what God has provided in the present time. We're very much consumers in America, and we think about what we would like to buy uh, at the next sale or, or you know, that the ads in the newspaper come up, you know, President's Day sale, Memorial Day sale, Fourth of July sale, Labor Day sale, uh, Halloween sale, you know, October Thanksgiving sale. And we're always thinking about what the next thing is we're going to buy or consume. God wants us to be grateful for what we have right now. Other times, we're like the people who were on the seventh day. They went out and tried to gather food, and it wasn't there. They tried to gather the man, and it wasn't there. Sometimes we're striving for things. Sometimes we're striving to, to get something when God has said, no, you don't need to strive. You need to rest. What I have given you will be enough. And sometimes we get tired, and we strive, and we, and we work so hard because we don't trust that what God has given us is enough. We don't trust that what he has already provided is enough. And that's a test of faith. And so when you strive and strive and strive and you don't find what you're looking for and you don't get what you desire and you, and you don't see how God is providing in all of your striving, well, maybe God is asking you to rest and say, this is your Sabbath time. And then other, others of us, maybe we might be like the people who, uh, who were, um, were lazy on the, on the sixth day and didn't gather enough and went out on the seventh day and realized, oh, there's not any here. Someone said to me, he, he's a farmer by trade, works in agriculture, and he said, well, God provides for the birds, but he doesn't just bring the food to their nest. And so God takes care of the birds, but as we observe the birds, they're, they're out looking for food. They don't just sit in the nest and wait for it to come. So sometimes we can be lazy and we can forget God's instruction to gather enough for that day or gather enough on the sixth day for the seventh day. So I hope this encourages you today that we need to trust God for our daily bread. And maybe we're, we, we just need to rest in certain times and trust what he has provided and, and other times uh, we need to remind ourselves that we don't need to think and pray ahead. We need to be grateful in the moment. And sometimes trusting God for our daily bread means being diligent. And we pray, give us today our daily bread, Lord. And then we go to the work that God has given us. We go to the responsibilities in the family or the community that God has placed us in. We go to uh, whatever things that we need to do that day that are required of us. Work was good. God created Adam and Eve uh, to work in the garden. And it was only as a result of sin that work became toilsome. So my encouragement you to, to you today from Exodus chapter 16 is to trust God for your daily bread. Let's pray together. Give us today, Lord, our daily bread. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally in our minds and in our thoughts may we trust you and even when we're surprised and like the people of israel said what is it it's manna it's daily bread may we see you behind all of the provision that we have may we be diligent and may we also rest when we need to rest your instruction, Lord, your Holy Spirit working within us is a gift of your grace, and we ask this in your name.